Welcome to Mikun's Hardware. Yes, I know it's not the video you were all expecting, but unfortunately I have got lots of things which went absolutely not according to the plan. I had to cancel my LJ1151 Mutants tests, and I also did not have a chance to finish my Xeon EFI 2696 V2 tests in comparison to Threadripper 1920X. Meanwhile, I have received this motherboard, and that's why I have decided to finish testing and make a review about this motherboard, because it was something that I could actually complete in a feasible amount of time. Unfortunately, right after I have finished testing the motherboard, Xeon prices skyrocketed, and right now you can find absolutely unreasonable and unbelievable prices for Xeon E5 V3 and V4 on eBay and AliExpress. This happened because Chinese decided to heavily invest into mining, and these Xeon E5 CPUs are extremely popular because they have 40 PCI Express lanes. These 40 PCI Express lanes are given possibility to adjust multiple graphics cards with full PCI Express X16 or X8 connection, and it also gives extra possibilities to install extra storage devices. Recently, they have launched another cryptocurrency called Filecoin. This cryptocurrency needs not only CPU and GPU power, but also lots of storage and lots of fast storage. 40 PC Express lanes is obviously extremely attractive to be able to process I.O. faster and gain more file coins. This is really unfortunate, but China decided to invest into this cryptocurrency and they have bought lots of the Xeon E5 CPUs, and uh, that's why Chinese decided to increase the prices and we have what we have. Still, let's go back to the motherboard and talk about the motherboard itself. The motherboard is called ZX99D3A4. Because the motherboard name is not very convenient and rather long, in this video I'm going to call this motherboard simply ZX or ZX99. And this motherboard is produced on the same factory as Plex HD X99 Turbo or Atermiter or Atermiter X99 or simply ZX99 EV3. That factory is known for its poor quality and I was expecting another disappointment from this motherboard. First, let's compare ZX99 to 100X99TF. As you can see, both of the motherboards are looking very much the same. Here you will find some difference between the location of different components and connectors for the front panel, the location for USB 3, USB 2, as well as the post cord and the buttons which are on the motherboard itself and the speaker are slightly different, but in general it's kind of the same. Here on Huanan GX99TF you will find two additional jumpers which are enabling or disabling USB support for the M.2 slot. On ZX99 you will not find this because ZX99 has M.2 slot and only one USB 2.0 header for the front panel, so you don't need to switch USB 2 support on and off, it's always on. One more big difference between these two motherboards is the VRM and VRM cooling. X99TF has active VRM cooling, it's supposed to have two active fans over here on the VRM heatsink, but I have replaced them with an M.2 heatsink. ZX99 instead of the active VRM cooling has a plastic sticker on top of the VRM radiator. This sticker might be trapping some heat into the radiator and preventing proper cooling, but I did not want to remove it because I think the motherboard looks better with this sticker, so I did the testing with this sticker. Additionally, I can say that the gap between the CPU socket and the VRM capacitors on X99TF is slightly bigger than ZX99 over here, and this is a little bit of a problem if you are planning to install some big coolers. For example, my go-to server cooler, which I'm using for my testing, it is possible to install it on X99TF, there is enough space between the cooler and the capacitors, but if I install this cooler on ZX99 over here, I can keep it there, but if I try to screw these screws, then the cooler will be damaging these capacitors, which are way too close to the CPU socket. Nevertheless, I have tested the VRM of this motherboard using this Intel cooler, which looks like Intel box cooler, but it's not a box cooler because LJ2011 and 2011-3 did not have any box coolers. So this one, it is slightly higher over here and slightly smaller. If I install it here, I can uh, 
uh, screw it onto the motherboard and it's not damaging that capacitors. Of course, this one you can also install on a X99TF, which is not a big surprise. I think it's stuck over there. I need to twist it. Yeah, okay, it's going off. So you can, of course, install it on X99TF as well. And the last major difference between these two motherboards is location of the BIOS chip. X99TF has the BIOS chip located over here, which is right under this radiator for the chipset, which is rather annoying. If you happen to break your motherboard, you need to take off the radiator and only then you can connect to the BIOS chip. ZX99, on the other hand, has a slightly smaller radiator, even though it has a very similar shape, and the BIOS chip is located over here, it doesn't have any capacitors around, and it's not covered by the heatsink, which makes it very easy to connect um, the programmatic clip on and off. Let's quickly go through the technical specification of the motherboard. As usual, we have socket for LJ2011 version 3 CPUs, 8 memory slots, 4 of them are black, those are DDR4, and 4 of them are gray, those are DDR3. The motherboard is working in quad-channel memory configuration. Here you will find 8 SATA 3 connectors, and for the front panel you have everything you would wish for. Front panel buttons and LEDs, USB 3, COM port, USB 2, clear simul jumper, two 3-pin fan headers, and audio exit for the front panel. The 4-pin fan connectors are located over here and over here. This one is for the CPU fan and this one is an additional one. To install expansion cards you will find 3 PCI Express X16 slots, this one is X16, this one is X16, and this one is X8. But the last one shares PCI Express lanes with this M.2 slot. By default, in the BIOS, the M.2 slot is enabled, and the last PCI Express slot works as X4. Still, if you wish, you can disable the M.2 slot, and this one is going to work as PCI Express X8. The second M.2 slot is connected to the chipset, thus it is working as PCI Express 2.0 X4. And here you will find additional M.2 slot to install Wi-Fi and Bluetooth expansion cards. The PCI Express X1 slots are connected to the chipset, thus they are also working as PCI Express 2.0 X1. The power connectors are located over here, the motherboard 24-pin and the CPU 8-pin power connector. At the back side of the motherboard you will also find quite some ports. Two PS2 ports, two USB 2 ports, four USB 3 ports, two additional USB 2 ports, Ethernet port, and audio exits. Judging by the specification, the motherboard is very decent. And also touching the motherboard, I did not feel disgusted. The build quality seems okay, and it also feels rather nice. Nevertheless, after I got my first initial test results, I was really disappointed and really disgusted. The motherboard came to me with really bad and disgusting BIOS. This BIOS does not have all required features, such as memory timings configuration, but it also doesn't work with the CPU overclocking, even though the options are physically there in the BIOS. If I try to overclock my unlock CPUs, the system simply doesn't boot. The motherboard also has some kind of a weird power consumption, and that's why the VRM is overheating or heating rather much. USB 3.0 ports are also not working properly. Basically, the motherboard seems to be decent, but the original BIOS is a real crap. Since the motherboard has so many good features and feels rather nice, I really didn't want to make another video about another Chinese disappointment. That's why I have turned to BIOS I engineer and paid him for development of a good BIOS for this motherboard. Everything I'm going to tell about this motherboard is only applicable if you're using BIOS from iEngineer. This BIOS you can get from his GitHub page or from Mi899. I have updated my application and there you will find BIOS from iEngineer as well as Turbo Unlocked options if you would like to unlock Turbo Boost of your CPU. Of course, there will be technical slides with all technical information and all the detailed test results by the end of the video, but right now I'm going to tell you the most important things. So, using BIOS from iEngineer, everything on this motherboard is actually working as it should, except of a few things. Windows Sleep Mode doesn't work even if you're using BIOS from iEngineer. This seems to be a hardware limitation which is not possible to simply overcome with a better BIOS. Maybe Sleep Mode will be working with Mac OS and a Hackintosh configuration, but I do not test such configurations, thus I don't know. With Windows it doesn't work. 
Another limitation compared to Huanan GX99TF is the DDR3 memory speed. With the ZX99, I was only able to reach DDR3-1866, while with X99TF and X99T8 it is possible to overclock your DDR3 memory to DDR3-2133. Thus, so far it's only two motherboards for the X99 platform from China which are able to utilize DDR3-2133 speed. These are Huanan GX99TF and Huanan GX99T8. ZX99D3A4 is unfortunately limited to DDR3-1866, but I think it's not that big of a limitation. Another thing I was really concerned about on this motherboard is the VRM. The motherboard is using exactly the same VRM or power delivery system as Quantum GX99ZD4. The VRM has only three phases, each phase has a doubler, and a doubler has two MOSFETs or two transistors. This is not a really good VRM, and I would rather say it's a really pathetic VRM, but after doing some tests, I was pleasantly surprised, because the VRM radiator is mounted really well, and the doublers are also under the VRM radiator, the temperatures with EFI 2678V3, Turbo Boost unlocked, under ADA64 stress test, were really not bad. According to the motherboard VRM temperature sensor, which is actually working on this motherboard, the temperatures were around 65 to 70 degrees Celsius. If I'm using my external thermometer on the surface and around this radiator, I was able to measure temperatures 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. It could be because I'm using such an Intel CPU cooler, which is blowing air in all directions, and it also somehow blowing into this radiator, which helps to keep the VRAM um, cooled down. But with the other motherboards, I have been using uh, such cooler, which has a directed fan, and this fan is actually when installed uh, like this, it blows straight onto the VRAM, so it is cooling down the VRAM, but on the other motherboards, such as Machinist X99 RS9, the VRM is not able to hold EFI 2678V3, but this motherboard is able to do that. It is important to add with that with the default BIOS, the VRM was actually hotter than with the BIOS from iEngineer, but unfortunately I did not save the numbers for the real temperatures in degrees using the original BIOS, and I also did not test it with a Turbo Boost Unlock, thus it would be comparing apples to oranges, but just by failing the VRM with my finger, I can say that it was significantly hotter with the original BIOS compared to the BIOS from iEngineer. Another good thing about the motherboard is uh, that the VRM temperature sensor is working as I have mentioned. There are multiple sensors on the motherboard, but only one is working, and that one is displaying some kind of sane values. With external thermometer, I was getting 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, and HW monitor was reporting that the VRM had temperatures of around 65 to 70 degrees Celsius, which makes perfect sense. Also, the power consumption of the CPU and the memory is also working properly fine on the motherboard, which is another good plus. Other than that, I did not find any extra issues or any extra defects on the motherboard. Yes, I would not recommend to install 145 watt CPUs on this motherboard, and I would also not recommend to overclock E5 1660 v3 on this motherboard, but for something like Xeon E5 2678 v3 or Xeon E5 2690 v3, this could be a perfect option if you can get it for a decent price. One more important thing to tell about ZX99 is that the PCI Express lanes are routed differently compared to Huanan GX99TF. So, on this motherboard, if you install i7-5820K or another CPU which has only 28 PCI Express lanes, the motherboard will be working in the following configuration. The first PCI Express slot, this one, is working as PCI Express X16, which is really good. The second one is working as PCI Express X8, which is also not bad. And the last one is going to work as PCI Express X4, which is a disappointment. Of course, it is good that the last PCI Express slot is working, but the problem is that because they have routed PCI Express lanes to the last PCI Express X16 slot, 
the M.2 slot is now disabled. I guess they have made it because they want to be able to connect as many graphics cards as possible, but it's still an inconvenience if you're installing a gaming i7 CPU with just 28 PCI Express lanes, you will have to install an additional M.2 expansion card into this or this slot if you would like to have an NVMe SSD drive. Of course, you can also use this M.2 slot, but that one is connected to the chipset and it is limited to PCI Express 2.0 x4. My score for ZX99 D3A4 motherboard will be 7 out of 10, but this is only because I was able to pay BIOS I engineer and get a very good BIOS for the motherboard. Without this BIOS, the motherboard would be a complete crap. Thus, I would like to thank all of you who made the donations through PayPal, who is supporting me through AliExpress affiliated links, and who is following me on Instagram and subscribed to YouTube. Without your support, I would not be able to pay for the BIOS development for this board. With this BIOS, the motherboard is a very decent option. Of course, I have tested only one unit, and I'm not able to say that entire range of these motherboards have a decent quality, but my particular unit has pretty good quality and I have no complaints about it. Nevertheless, I cannot recommend you to go and buy the motherboard, and there are two main reasons for that. First, the factory which is producing the motherboard is known for its poor quality with the X99 Turbo ZX EV3 motherboards. Yes, as I said, my particular unit does not have any issues and I hope the motherboard will be working well, but it's just one motherboard to be able to make some kind of a general conclusion that they have improved their quality. We need to test tens and maybe even hundreds, thousands of these motherboards and collect statistics and see how the motherboard is behaving over the time. The second major reason is the prices. Xeon E5, V3 and V4 CPUs have completely insane and unreasonable prices at the moment, and please do not waste your money on those CPUs. For this money you better be with the Intel LJ1200 platform or with the AMD AM4 platform. Ryzen CPUs have pretty affordable or pretty comparable prices to Xeon E5 CPUs on AliExpress, and LJ1200 engineering sample CPUs are also attractive options. You can slap them on cheap H410 and B460 motherboards and they will be working with no Xeon issues. Still, after a while Xeon prices will go back to normal and you shall be able to purchase one. Or maybe you will be able to find some local second-hand deals with the good prices for these E5, V3, V4 CPUs. Or maybe you already have one lying somewhere around and waiting for a motherboard. In that case, ZX99 D3A4 might be a good option if you are able to get it for a decent price. Other than that, that's probably all I can tell about the motherboard. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, goodbye.